Good morning and uh, welcome to Glen Get Outside Goes Walking. Uh, those of you who were watching the last uh, program I did will have known I got as far as uh, Weaver's Down Holt. Well today we're going to go a little bit further but Weaver's Down Holt is that one just behind us here. Well, if you remember there's not a lot left of that one now. Uh, just a few lumps of concrete and that's all we have left of it unfortunately. So where are we going today? Well I was looking at the maps uh, the other night and from the aerial photographs there are some sidings which are about half a mile up behind me. Uh, they're off the beaten track so I'm going to need to go across country a little bit to try and find these. The aerial photograph shows very distinctive marks on the ground so I'm curious to see if there is anything left uh, of the sidings. Uh, hey, whether we can get access to it because bear in mind we're on Longmore training area which is an army range. Uh, we have access to this estate, but there are some areas which are closed off. So let's uh, head on and see what we can find. Starting today's walk at Weaver's Down Holt, just here, and we are heading over to this collection of sidings, which show very clearly on the 1961 map. And if you look, it can also be seen on the aerial photograph as a series of lines going into the trees. So that is our target for today. Well, it seems we've uh, found the right path. And everything's looking good so far. Now, according to the map, we should be entering the goods yard very shortly. Uh, we'll have a quick scout round to see if we can find any initial signs of the sightings. And, uh, oh, well, we just arrived in the yard. Uh, and looking down in that direction is where the sidings are running. That way is where they would have come in from Longmore Station, or Longmore Goods Yard, should I say. The station's further across. But the first thing we found as soon as we arrived is this. So it looks like we're in luck. There we go. Nice piece of rail. So that's a good sign. If we look just across here, just about this line here. That looks to be the main line coming in from the Longmore goods uh, yards and the sheds and heading out to the uh, east, out towards the sidings. Well, it certainly looks as though we've definitely found the main line into the sidings. We look straight down there. Uh, it's quite clear to see the line of the track. And if we turn around and look the other way, you can see now that we're looking straight down the line. It's not until you get a chance to get up on slightly higher ground, not that there's a lot around here, um, and have a look around and you start to realise the sheer scale of this yard. Uh, it goes back down to the right some way, but there's some new developments down there. Um, but it's just a mass flat area. I finally found uh, the first piece of evidence for the uh, sightings which we can see in the aerial photograph looking down over the woods this one would have come up uh, through the uh, scrub there from that large open expanse we looked at earlier of the main goods uh, receipt yard and yes we found probably the best one so far if you have a look down there you can see where it would have gone through the undergrowth you can just see in the distance over there the uh, hard standing so it's come through there clear defined line here and it disappears up into the woods and that's where we're going to head off next and see what we can find well it looks like uh found about the last of the sightings now we're at the far end of the uh area which was uh, designated as a siding area so what i'm going to do now is we're going to head back along the top track here which goes along the uh top end of the sightings and see if there's any further evidence of buildings or any other railway paraphernalia. I was just um, investigating the first of these sidings I found and I spotted this spoil heap. Um, masses of concrete. So I thought I'd take a closer look and there's something very interesting has come up. If you look at uh, this slab here, the slab's got very distinctive square markings on the top. These are cast specially. I've seen these before. I've seen these <coughs> all around the world, uh, wherever the uh, British forces have been. And I think they're prefabricated. 
they're designed to form hard standings but around here I'm wondering whether they can be used for other purposes building temporary stations um, or just unloading bays so interesting thought to ponder we'll see what we find well I've just come back towards the uh, beginning area of the sidings and uh, taking a slightly different route back because an old map from uh, up to about 1936 up to about the 1960s showed evidence of uh, building work and sure enough we found some looks like a little maybe a platform edge uh, with the uh, siding down here just in front of me uh, some form of storage building perhaps uh, but uh, certainly very nice clean cut you can see there when we looked at the pile of rubble earlier the distinctive pattern they use on the slabs which they built up and it looks as though that was just managed to be reinforced sorry prefabricated slabs brought on site to allow them to build platforms fairly quickly again this could be evidence of what they did in Europe taking out prefabricated sections of concrete um, and then building halts and depots drop-off points as required as the uh, Allied forces progress through Europe but uh, this is a very interesting looking little uh, piece of architecture uh, even got some evidence down here on the bottom of the sleepers still um, looks a little precarious in places the brickwork the way it's eroded away now but uh, yeah and it also looks possibly uh, as though there's evidence of another siding track on a slightly raised embankment coming through here so uh, yeah there's still some remains left of the uh, old railway and uh, it's good to see that not everything has been destroyed and now uh, just walking along the line of the track which went from the sidings heading west towards the Longmore engine sheds and the main goods area Longmore camp formed the main hub of the system and that is where most of the engines and rolling stock were stored and maintained and that's about another half a mile along this track I think with that now I think that's a good time to call it a day and uh, head back home I don't do these uh, these talks on railways because I'm a bit of a railway geek it's uh, actually the complete opposite I, I had an interest in steam railways when I was a kid but academically my background is in landscape archaeology uh, with a master's degree in that subject so what I do is I like looking at the history in the landscape try to identify from maps where old sites are and then going out onto site and trying to find them and trying to piece together evidence of how, why, where, when and who they were built for by a good example being that looking at those prefabricated sections on that platform and what I've seen on that debris dump a bit earlier that maybe they took prefabricated stations out with them don't know but it's good to try and uncover these theories anyway I'm going to walk back home now all my walks at the moment are local walks uh, firm believer at the moment that we should stay local although it is good to get outside and uh, I've got about three quarters of an hour's walk now back home uh, in time for a bacon butty I hope and a cup of coffee so until next time thanks very much and please uh, subscribe like comment nice to hear good and bad comments uh, it's just nice to know that somebody's watching me um, especially as this is my first real attempt at face to face so Good day. Thanks very much, Steve, for watching. Bye.